a lot of people see me as an American composer. They don't realize that, you know, I, I've got 28 generations of, mm -hmm. of Persian ancestors behind me. So it's, you know, it's, I'm really the, the, truly the first generation American in my family. Um, and they don't, you know, a lot of people who know my music don't know that about me necessarily. I've kept my Persian ancestry at, uh, at a distance when it came to the music I was writing until recently. Um, I was born in the United States. My parents came from Iran when they were fairly young. My mother, toward the end of World War II, uh, with her family, courtesy a U.S. cargo ship carrying wounded Marines through the Pacific. Uh, and my father came to New York to go to college at the age of 16. Um, and they met in New York and, and were married there. I went to Iran once at the age of seven in 1963. It was the same year of the Kennedy assassination. And we were there for about 11 months. It was a difficult time for a number of reasons. But uh, perhaps because of the intensity of the time spent there, my memory, both visual and oral, is very clear. Uh, and so that was a real repository for me, uh, a repository of information and sound uh, when I started to become interested in going back to my ancestral pool. The turning points for me that got me interested in writing in this way um, I, I began writing a piece in 2009 for a trio that was based in Philadelphia, piano, cello, and flute. And the title of the piece is Remembering Neda. Neda Sultan was the woman who most of us in the United States saw murdered on CNN, courtesy of a, of a telephone camera. and. Uh, during this period when the, the validity of those elections were being challenged, my mother, who is still very much alive and living in Florida, was giving me information about what was actually going on there. And she was speaking about how a quiet but nonetheless determined counter-revolution was being pulled together by mostly the women of the country. And I thought this was extraordinary to have a Gandhian counter-revolution being led by women. Of course, they're the citizens of that country who have had the most to lose in this male-dominated theocratic environment. Nonetheless, I wrote the piece and found myself appropriating ideas from my memory of that time that I was a child. I wasn't writing necessarily tunes or incorporating melodies and rhythms from that period, but rather it was my memory of those rhythms and melodies. Uh, and they're probably a little bit better than the original melodies because that's what happens when things gestate in a composer's brain for a while. Nonetheless, I saw the freshness of what was coming out and I felt a, a, a sense of purpose in what I was doing. Uh, and and uh, a number of other in bits of information that have surfaced about my family's background genealogy, which have been very interesting to me, really led me deep, more deeply into writing music that is, that is really more derived from that part of the world than from the part of the world I've spent most of my life living in. So to be very clear about this uh, before talking about anything else, I'm not an Iranian composer. I'm an American composer with a Persian memory with a Middle Eastern memory, if you will. And that memory has now been invoked full force with the, with the writing of a number of pieces. The second work that I wrote, Darkness in the Ancient Valley, was a more 
uh, pervasive exploration into some of the stuff that's going on in Iran now, particularly the way the people of that country have been mistreated and brutalized by the regime. And uh, the last movement uh, is a poem by Rumi that involves a woman who has been abused by her husband but refuses to turn away because she wants to recognize the best in him, hoping that the best in him will come forth. Uh, this was premiered in Nashville by the Nashville Symphony. And as I was writing it, as I was beginning that work, I saw the seeds of Toward a Season of Peace emerging. And although I saw the reality of this coming together through, in a practical way, through conversations with people at the PSO, uh, this, was, this was, I think, something that had been waiting for many years to happen, this large choral work that we're about to premiere. But in a way, it was, it was given a shot in the arm by the work that I was doing on the symphony that's entitled Darkness in the Ancient Valley. So I see that piece as a sister work to this younger, bigger brother.